keeping which in mind we devised what is called as the eyes and ease in the management of acute chemical injury which helps us uh, go in a very uh, algorithmic uh, way making sure that you have not missed anything in the uh, process of examination so the first thing the first eye is the inciting agent which is treated by irrigation so that's that's uh, the eyes of uh, the management the first eye in the management uh when the patient presents to you in the emergency if it's an acute chemical injury take a short quick history uh, ascertain what the nature of the chemical is if the patient is aware whether it was an acid or um, an alkali what has been the duration since the episode how many hours or how many days whether primary care if any was given especially wash and was there any associated mechanical injury if any for example a car battery explosion do a cursory torchlight examination rule out a globe rupture which is usually very very rare in patients with chemical injuries uh, do a ph check with the litmus strip as shown here in the uh, inferior fornix uh, and ascertain whether you're dealing with an acidic or an alkaline ocular surface you are not going to spend any time here doing a vision check you will start the wash even before you do the uh, vision check and to do the wash you will use irrigating or rinsing solutions that is available to you we normally prefer ringer lactate over 0.9% saline solution you have buffering solutions you can have amphoteric um, substances which work on both acids and bases but in the emergency situation either rl or normal saline whatever is available to you if rl preferably rl just use that to uh, start irrigating the ocular surface if it's a non medical um, setup just tap water is enough to uh, copiously irrigate the ocular surface so when you are in the um, emergency taking care of this particular um, patient the choice of aqueous solution uh, if available yes but it is of less prognostic importance than the timing of the treatment and any delay in irrigation should be avoided in these patients so how do you irrigate you put in a topical anesthetic place a speculum if it's a bilateral injury you do a simultaneous wash in both the eyes using either uh, ringer lactate or uh, normal saline we check the ph every 5 minutes during the wash this is the morgan lens uh, uh, which has been classically described uh, to be able to reach up to the depths of the fornices also but even if you don't have that you just uh, wash thoroughly using the speculum rinsing should last at least 15 minutes use as much of um, the irrigating solution that you need so that the ph comes down to uh, between 7 and 8 in the uh, lower fornix so uh, the issue with tap water is the plus side is that it can penetrate the cornea and actually dilute the offending agent but the uh, the uh, negative side to it is that it increases the edema and the corneal clouding with the uh, cell lysis which is the reason that you prefer the uh, other solutions uh, in case of tuna injury or blasts you have to double evert the lid to remove any chunk of um, tuna or debris which is there um, in the uh, upper fornix uh once you have done this wash your subsequent evaluation in the emergency would include a vision check a slit lamp examination of fluorescein staining of the ocular surface to assess the extent of the epithelial defect the corneal the conjunctival and conjunctival both vulvar and the tarsal surface do a detailed uh, meticulous documentation have a nice slit lamp drawing which shows exactly the extent of the ocular uh, 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 epithelial defect and then you document the corneal uh, status the uh, presence or absence of corneal edema presence of any stromal thinning sometimes you can have uh, then you also need to specifically look for the clock hours of limbal staining as i shall show subsequently the presence or absence of scleral ischemia look at the anterior chamber details how well you are able to see them and if there's anything specific that needs to be noted the finger tension has to be assessed in these eyes uh, look for presence of lid injuries uh, the extent of raw surface involving the lid margins the external eyelid the cheeks and the face draw face picture if there are any uh, facial injuries look for lid closure whether it's complete or not this is extremely important because you don't want the eye to remain partially open and uh, the patient to end up having a corneal melt because of that any other life threatening injuries obviously you would have looked as soon as the patient came into the emergency and a medical legal consent uh, has to be taken in cases of vitreal arch 
Uh, so once you have finished with the initial part of uh, irrigation and examination, the next eye that we're going to be focusing upon is the ocular surface inflammation, for which uh, the mainstay of treatment is by the use of topical corticosteroids, which is started immediately after the chemical injury, though the classical teaching is that we should use it for seven days and then probably, you know, uh, uh, kind of consider stopping it or tapering it. it. It is not that you have to abruptly stop it. It can be continued subsequently, but you have to simultaneously address the epithelial defect because that's when the, the complications of a persistent epithelial defect start setting in in the form of a stromal melt, which can be aggravated by topical steroids if you use it over an epithelial defect. The other uh, medications which help reduce the, stro the inflammation-induced stromal melt are uh, doxycycline, uh, topical citrate and topical ascorbate. If you have the uh, lab facility to reconstitute it, it can reduce your inflammation. But if you don't, then systemic ascorbate should be administered to the patient uh, uh, of up to two grams per day to be continued over the next uh, two weeks or more as the need be. The additional medications that are prescribed at this time are cycloplegics, broad spectrum antibiotics and uh, lubrication. And uh, once the inflammation uh, has been taken care of with all the medications that I have just mentioned, probably the most important aspect that needs to be addressed in a patient of chemical injury is the epithelial defect. That is the first E of the I's and E's. And uh, uh, for this, usually uh, we uh, place a bandage contact lens um, in the eye. You have large diameter lenses up to 18 millimeters, which are available. So even on day one, when you see the patient, unless the defect is a very small defect, which is only involving your cornea and you and there's no other external injury and you think that you, by patching for a day or two, things should settle down, uh, it is preferable to use a contact lens so that you can address the other issues by starting the patient on topical steroids and the other topical medications that are required and simultaneously keep examining these uh, patients. Uh, when you have a defect uh, which does not um, heal the uh, even with uh, uh, the initial medical management that you have initiated is when you start uh, thinking of the subsequent modalities, which are basically amniotic uh, membrane, which uh, provides a basement membrane for the residual epithelial cells to proliferate. It also has an additional role in abating surface inflammation. But what is important to remember is that uh, there is a role of amniotic membrane only if you have residual epithelial cells on the ocular surface. So when you have a very severe grade injury where you have an epithelial defect that is uh, uh, involving the entire tarsal surface and the ocular surface, and it's probably damaged a significant uh, proportion of your stem cells, uh, and you don't have residual cells to regenerate the amniotic membrane is not in a position to uh, provide you with cells it can only provide you with the basement membrane and uh, that is why when you have very severe uh, chemical injuries uh, uh, and you have delayed epithelialization of the cornea you end up seeing a lot of these uh, complications where the central part of the cornea which is the last to epithelize ends up with either a stromal melt or a stromal scarring or uh, uh, in certain cases even with a perforation which ultimately requires a tectonic penetrating or lamellar keratoplasty in the acute stage or a similar keratoplasty uh, in the chronic stage for visual rehabilitation and precisely to avoid this um, uh, and to help the surface heal faster when you have a very severe grade of chemical injury along with the amniotic membrane, you also have to provide the ocular surface with an alternate source of cells, which could be in the form of either a mucous membrane from the patient's own uh, uh, oral mucosa, or uh, you can provide uh, cells from an allolimbal graft, which is what uh, uh, is called as allosleth and is advocated for very severe chemical injuries which do not show any evidence of healing in the first few days with uh, just your uh, medical management and even one trial of amniotic membrane, which is what we described in our paper that introduced the concept of allosleth in the early stage of ocular chemical uh, 
injury, which is very similar to the autosled that has been described in literature by uh, Professor Sangwan. And uh, it's basically the same technique, but only thing we use allograft from the cadaver uh, limbal stem cells, whereby we aim to achieve quick epithelialization of the ocular surface. So that once you have an epithelial cover on the cornea, you don't have inflammatory mediators getting into the stroma, leading to the haze or a possible melt or a possible infection. And subsequently, when the allo cells which you have transplanted fail, because they will, because you're not going to put these patients on immunosuppression especially if it's a one a unilateral injury, you anticipate uh, these allo cells to fail. And just at the time that you would do an auto sled, otherwise in these patients at around four to six months after the injury, you do an auto sled when the allo cells start failing. So what we have seen is there is a lesser need for subsequent PK or LK due to lesser stromal scarring in these patients. There's a faster visual rehabilitation and there's a lesser possibility of occurrence of amblyopia in children because they start seeing much earlier. So these are some of the case illustrations where we have used um, allosled um, in the acute stage followed by autosled in the uh, chronic stage. And this is one of our, another one of our patients where uh, you can see the patient is maintaining a vision of 6-9 actually now almost more than four years after the injury. It's the left eye that's injured where uh, this was the presenting uh, feature and uh, the patient continues to see 6-9 in the eye after an allosled in the acute stage and an autosled in the chronic stage. Another important factor which we sometimes miss in the acute stage is to look for ischemia, which has to be specifically looked for. So if it is uh, scleral ischemia, so if it's localized, you can observe the area of ischemia, but if it's generalized, then these are patients who require the ischemia to be addressed because you will then end up with uh, Complications such as uh, uh, corneal stromal melt, again, ischemia can delay or prevent epithelialization because you don't have a vascular bed and you can also have an associative severe hypotony in these patients. And when you have ischemia that needs to be addressed, we normally do that um, with a tenon plasty uh, by the technique which has been described by uh, Ryan et al., where we mobilize the tenons from the equator and secure it at the limbus using vicral sutures and then place amniotic membrane over the entire um, surface. The uh, next uh, uh, eye that needs to be addressed is the intraocular pressure, which if high needs to be treated with systemic acetazolamide. We try to prevent the use of topical anti-glaucoma medications in the acute chemical injury stage. And if it's low, then uh, we start these patients on systemic steroids along with the systemic ascorbate. And uh, either ways, it needs an appropriate timely management. Exposure is probably one of the most underemphasized points in management of acute chemical injury because if you, especially with acid injuries, you end up having this kind of an SCHAR uh, which prevents the eyelids from moving and it prevents the eyelids from shutting down. And these patients require a cut down of the SCHAR along with a skin graft. And just a simple tarsoraphy is all that's required in these patients if you are planning to refer the patient across so that there is no um, perforation that occurs by the time the patient reaches um, a higher center. The ultimate uh, uh, caveat in managing these patients with chemical injuries is that corneal perforation has to be avoided at all costs because it totally changes your prognosis. It totally changes your management in these eyes. And a simple temporary tarsoraphy before referring the patient to the higher center in the presence of an epithelial defect is all that's required. Just take two or three sutures and zipper the lid before you send the patient across. If the patient has an epithelial, near total corneal epithelial uh, defect if you cannot do the other means which have been described. Uh, so when the patient has a thinning, then what we normally do is we either uh, plan for a multi-layered amniotic membrane or a cyanoacrylate through application. Or if the perforation has already occurred, if it's small, then we go ahead with a tectonic lamellar keratoplasty or a penetrating uh, keratoplasty if there is a, a total perforation of the uh, globe. So uh, I think as far as the management of acute chemical injury is concerned, if each of these I's and E's are addressed systematically and you follow this concoction of medications in the initial management along with the addressal of the I's and E's, then uh, you will have a good outcome in these uh, patients. And the pertinent points which I would like to restress upon is that in case of a line injury, GA exam is mandatory. It is mandatory for children as well as for adults who are not cooperative for examination uh, because this is how you have the tuna uh, being trapped in the uh, upper uh, 
fornix and uh, this keeps releasing the alkali into the ocular surface and you end up with uh, severe damage to the ocular surface so every child every in fact every adult every patient who has a chuna injury should be subjected to a mandatory ga examination in order to clear this and excise this um, lime that gets deposited in the upper uh, fornix and uh, this is the same um, uh, patient after multiple interventions uh, after all the steps of uh, adresal of eyes and knees have been uh, done in the acute stage if there's a plaque we do attempt to remove the plaque also and uh, even if you're putting a bcl in the eye these patients have to come back to you for a daily review because uh, you have to grade these patients even when they are uh, when you see them on day 1 and it, it is the duas classification that we routinely follow where we mention the amount of limbal involvement and the percentage of conjunctival involvement uh, as mentioned here the percentage of epithelial defect and the clock hours of uh, limbal staining this is a dynamic uh, grading which changes with treatment it indicates it's what the effect of your management is whether it is improving or worsening it dictates the course and change of treatment and you have to document the grade every day when you assess these patients and this is what we tried to emphasize in this paper where we spoke about the algorithmic approach to management of patients where each and every i and e has an effect on the epithelial defect which in turn has an effect on the complications that you encounter in patients of um, chemical uh, injuries and this is an algorithmic approach to each of those parameters and how you will go ahead treating each of these based on the extent of damage that has occurred to the ocular surface so the goals that you had set when you uh, started off uh, you will achieve most of these uh, uh, with a good outcome by addressing the eyes and ears and it's equally important to remember that you have to counsel the family and the patient that the primary aim of treatment uh, in the acute stage is only to heal the ocular surface and you have to explain to them that the visual and cosmetic prognosis is something which can be determined only after the eye goes into the chronic stage and there's a possible need for multiple surgeries with regular follow ups because when you have a patient who comes to you like this which is actually almost close to a grade 6 chemical injury in the absence of corneal clouding and presence of an epithelial defect on day 1 the vision that is documented in the acute stage is always good patient will be reading 66 when the patient comes to the emergency but has a 360 degree scleral ischemia which is an ominous sign a white eye in chemical injury is an ominous sign and when you when you treat this patient subsequently this is the way uh, the eye will vascularize and uh, conjunctivalize and there's a progressive decrease of vision which occurs which many a times the patients and family wrongly attribute to the management by the uh, ophthalmologist rather than to the injury and in this particular patient ultimately required a type 1 keratoprosthesis with which he has been maintaining a vision of 66 because he had a similar grade injury in the other eye also with ammonia so basically in the acute stage the uh, aim is to salvage the globe and salvage the stem cells to the extent that is possible and very briefly to touch upon uh, the management in the chronic stage is based on the extent of limbal stem cell deficiency based on that uh, we have an algorithm to treat these patients based on the laterality and the tear film status so if it's a total limbal stem cell unilateral deficiency then slet is the most recommended form of treatment uh, uh, and if it's bilateral we have multiple uh, choices and keratoprosthesis to choose from today we have uh, various options and these are summarized in the review article on keratoprosthesis in uh, the igo which we published uh, a couple of years back and these are some of the patients with chemical injuries uh, where you can see from the acute stage to the end point and the multiple years of follow up thereafter maintaining good vision with the different types of keratoprosthesis that are available as of uh, today to treat these patients so the one thing that i always say is that since we have so many options which are available for visual rehabilitation in the chronic stage of severe bilateral chemical injuries every chemical injury in the acute stage should be managed aggressively with the sole aim of preventing corneal perforation and any other complications and severe cases should be referred to tertiary centers when required and a simple tarsorapy before referring could reduce the risk of perforation and eyes with exposure 
and large epithelial defects. It's the management in the acute stage that determines the long-term outcome and prognosis. You can transform the lives of patients and if managed well in the acute stage, she presented to us like this. We had to struggle to get her back to some amount of normalcy. She had a retinal detachment in the eye and she now, five years later, is working as a teacher in the school. And you can really bring about a change in the lives of these uh, individuals. Thank you.